In this video, we're going to learn about the functions for classifying floating point numbers in C. So since the C99 standard, there have been functions which allow us to classify floating point numbers. Floating point numbers can take on certain special values. For example, a floating point number can be set to positive infinity or not a number. We might want to detect whether or not a number that we're working with has taken on one of these special values. To do this, we can include the math.h library where these functions are defined. We'll also include the float.h library. There is a float min preprocessor constant defined inside this library that we'll use later. So a typical floating point number will look like this. We'll have float finite to declare a float variable called finite, and we'll initialize it with the value 2.5. So this here is a finite floating point number. We could test to see whether or not a floating point number is finite using the isFinite function. So we could have here if is finite, and we'll pass it finite, and we expect the function to return true because that is a finite number. We could have printf percent %f is finite backslash n, and we'll output finite here. Now, if we save, compile, and run the program, we do get that 2.5 is finite, and that makes sense. But we can have numbers in C that are not finite. So for example, if I have here float infinite, this will declare a float variable called infinite. Then we'll initialize it to 1.0 divided by zero. Now, divide by zero is not really allowed in normal mathematics but 1.0 divided by zero is going to result in the value positive infinity in C. So here we can check for that. We can check to see if the variable infinite is set to infinite using the isInf function. So we could have here if isInf when it's past the value of infinite returns true, then we'll output percent %f is infinite and we'll have backslash n, and we'll output infinite. So we can save, compile, and run our program, and we can see the infinite variable has been set to this special value, inf for infinity. And we get here, inf is infinite. So what happened is, this is inf function was able to detect that this value here was infinity. So we can use this function to detect this special value. There's also a negative infinity value. So if we have here float negative infinite is equal to negative 1.0 divided by zero, this will give us the value negative infinity and it will be stored into this float variable negative infinite. We could detect whether a floating point number is negative or not using the sign bit function. So sign bit is going to return true if the number is negative. So we could have if sign bit when past the value negative infinite is true, then we'll output here percent %f is negative backslash n, and we'll output negative infinite here. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we get the special value here negative inf for negative infinity. And we get negative inf is negative because the signment function is going to return true when the value it's passed is negative. Now there's also a special value for not a number. So for example, if we have float not a number is equal to 0.0, .0 divided by 0.0. .0. 0.0, .0 divided by 0, 0.0 is going to result in the special value not a number, and that's going to be assigned to not a number. We could then check to see if not a number is set to not a number using the isNAN function. So if isNAN, when passed not a number, returns true, we'll output here percent %f is not a number backslash n and we'll output here not a number. And then if we save, compile, and run our program, we get here NAN for not a number is not a number. 
And that's because the not a number variable stores the special value NAN after dividing zero by zero. And we get here is NAN returns true because that value is not a number. Now there's also what's called a subnormal value for floating point numbers. Let's declare a float variable called number. And at first, we'll assign it the value FLT underscore min. So FLT underscore min is a preprocessor constant. It's the value of the smallest normalized float number. Floating point numbers can be stored in a normalized format, or they can be stored in a denormalized or subnormal format. Getting into exactly what those terms mean would be outside the scope of this video, but essentially, we can store floating point numbers that are extra small if we are willing to sacrifice some precision. And that's essentially what a subnormal floating point number is. It's a floating point number that's extra small and where we may lose some precision to store it. FLT underscore min is the smallest normalized float value that we can store with the regular amount of expected precision for a float value. Let's check to see if this value is normal using the isNormal function. So we'll have here if is normal, and we'll pass it the value of number. And if the value is normal, we're going to output percent %e. We're going to use percent %e to output the value because it's a very small number, and percent %e will give us scientific notation. And we'll have is normal backslash n, and then we'll have the value here, number. If it's not normal, we'll output percent %e is not normal, backslash n, and again, we'll have the value here, number. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we get that this very small number here is normal. And that is what we expected, because FLT underscore min is the smallest normalized float value that we can store. If we divide that number by 10, we're going to get an even smaller number. This number will now be subnormal. It will be not a normalized number anymore. If we save, compile, and run the program, we now get that this even smaller number is not normal. And again, that is what we expected. So we can use the isNormal function to determine if a number is stored in a normalized way or not. Now there's also a function called fpclassify, and fpclassify will accept a float value as an argument and return a classification of that number. So for example, let's say we have a float value test equal to 1.0 divided by 0, 0.0. This is again going to give us the special value positive infinity. We can call fpclassify and give it test as an argument and the function is going to return one of several preprocessor constants. So for example, in the case of an infinite value, it's going to return the preprocessor constant fp underscore infinite, and we could check for that. So what we could do is put fp classify called with the value test inside a switch statement. So here we'll have switch with the result of fp classify test. And we're going to look at the return value of calling this function, and we'll have a case for each return value. So we'll have here case fp underscore infinite colon, and we'll output here printf percent f is infinite backslash n, and we'll output test, and then we'll have break. And we can test out this one case first. So we can save, compile, and run the program, and we get here INF is infinite. Now, what if test was, instead of 1.0 divided by 0, 0.0, what if it was 0, 0.0 divided by 0, 0.0? Now we're back to not a number again. We could have another case for that value. We could have here case FP underscore NAN. Then we could have printf percent F is not a number backslash n, and again, we'll output test, followed by break. And we can test this out, save, compile, and run the program. And we get here, nan is not a number. So we can use this one function to detect 
multiple different types of special values. If test was a normal value, like 2.5, we could use case and then FP underscore normal to detect it is a normalized value. So we could have here printf percent F is normal backslash N and output test followed by break. And if we save compile and run the program, we get here 2.5 is normal because it is a normalized number. If we change this to FLT underscore min divided by 10, we now have a subnormal value there and we could have a case for that too. We could have case FP underscore subnormal colon printf percent F is subnormal backslash N and we could output test and we'll have a break here. And again, if we save compile and run the program, we get that this number here is subnormal. We can also check to see if the number is zero. So if it was zero here, we could have 0, 0.0. We could have a case for that as well. So we could have your case and then FP underscore zero colon printf percent F is zero backslash N and output test and then break. And if we save compile and run the program, we get that 0.0, .0 is zero. Now it's possible to have implementation specific preprocessor constants. So we could have a default case here to detect those if we didn't know what they are. We could have default colon and then printf and then unknown here to handle any unknown preprocessor constant. So all of the preprocessor constants we've used in the cases above are guaranteed to be there as part of the C99 standard, but there could technically be others that are compiler specific. All of the functions we've gone over to classify floating point values are implemented as function like macros. And so they'll actually work for other types of floating point values like double or long double as well. So this is how we can use the functions to classify floating point values in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.